The 4.2 billion Boeing Starliner spacecraft successfully landed in New Mexico early on September 7, concluding a trouble test mission that faced considerable challenges in space. However, the Starliner returned to Earth without its crew members of NASA astronauts Barry Wilmore and Sunita Williams, who remained aboard the International Space Station due to a thruster problem. Initially, intended for an eight-day mission, but the astronauts will now stay on the International Space Station until February 2025, returning via SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft. This mission was Boeing's first test flight of the Starliner spacecraft. Successfully completing this mission would have positioned Boeing as the second private company after SpaceX to provide NASA with crew transport to the International Space Station. The success of the Starliner mission was critical for Boeing especially given the company's recent challenges in both its airline and space sectors. However, this mission was marred with problems since the beginning. The launch was initially planned for May 6 to 24, but a small helium leak was detected in the service module shortly after the initial launch attempt, causing the mission to be scrubbed. During the successful launch on June 5, two more helium leaks were discovered one of which was relatively large at 395 PSI per minute. After docking with the International Space Station on June 6, a fourth leak was found, although it was much smaller at 7.5 PSI per minute. By June 11, a total of five helium leaks had been detected in the Starliner spacecraft's propulsion system. After extensive testing and analysis, Boeing engineers concluded that the helium leaks were likely caused by slightly degraded seals exposed to toxic propellants over an extended period. Despite these leaks, Wilmore said that Starliner performed unbelievably well, noting that he was tempted to give the spacecraft a rare rating of 1 on the astronaut scale of 1 to 10 for spacecraft handling qualities. However, the mission's course took a drastic turn on the second day. As they approached the International Space Station, one of Starliner 28 Reaction Control System, or RCS thrusters, unexpectedly shut down, followed by another. The astronauts were forced to take manual control for over an hour, while ground teams scrambled to troubleshoot the issue. Ultimately, five RCS thrusters shut down. Though some thrusters were restored, spacecraft's thrust remained. Degraded despite these challenges, Starliner managed to dock with the International Space Station with remarkable precision even in automatic mode. NASA initially scheduled a June 14th undocking for Starliner, but it was delayed to no earlier than June 18th to avoid a conflict with an ISS spacewalk. The mission was further extended to June 25th to allow more time for thruster and helium leak testing. The extension provided additional time for astronauts to conduct tests on Starliner including assessments of its life support systems and other critical functions needed for future crewed missions. The months of July and August saw considerable tension between NASA and Boeing. Boeing insisted after extensive testing that Starliner was safe to bring the two home. However, because of a cascade of thruster trouble and helium loss, NASA ultimately decided it was too risky to return them on St. Starliner and booked a flight with SpaceX instead. To add to the fears, something strange happened in late August. Astronaut Butch Wilmore reported hearing weird noises coming from the faulty Boeing Starliner that was then docked on the International Space Station. Houston, I'm two. I've got a question about Starliner. Houston's with you, Butch. Go ahead. Uh, There's a strange noise coming through the speaker, and I didn't know if you could connect into the Starliner and let me uh, keep my let you hear. I don't, I don't know what, what's making it, but uh, I don't know if it's something that maybe is connected uh, between here and there, making that happen, but uh, anyway, can you do that? We can configure that, Butch. Give us a minute, and I'll call you back when it's ready. Okay. Station Houston on two, we're configured for audio via hardline and CST, if you want to give us a call. Okay, I'm at, uh, I'm at Starliner, and how do you read? Five by five, how me? Okay, I'm going to put the key to mic up next to the speaker. Copy. Hear that? At negative, Butch, we did not hear anything. That. All right, Butch, that one came through. It was kind of like a pulsing noise, almost like a... Sonar ping. Yeah, I'll do it one more time and I'll just scratch your head to see if you can figure out what's going on. Here we go. Alright, over to you. 
Call us uh, to figure it out. Yep, good recording. Thanks, Butch. We will pass it on to the team and let you know what we find. And Butch, just to be make sure I'm on the same page, this is emanating from the speaker in Starliner. You don't notice anything else, uh, any other noises, any other weird configs in there? Okay, thank you. However, according to NASA experts, the sound was feedback from the spaceship's audio system, which connects lots of different ships. And there was nothing to worry about. On September 6th, Starliner undocked from the space station, and six hours later it parachuted into New Mexico's White Sands Missile Range, descending on autopilot through the desert darkness. While the mission ended, it raised some serious problems for both Boeing and NASA. The development of the Starliner is part of NASA's broader effort to ensure safe, reliable, and cost-effective transportation to and from the International Space Station. Thanks for watching, and for regular space updates and astronomical discoveries, make sure to subscribe to our channel.